dividing team fights in his favor. So when he's in a team fight, Tiffany does seem to feel extremely, extremely oppressive. But we've loaded through in two picks and bans on Clave Gaming taking on M and M. What are you expecting to see banned here? Um, I think, in my opinion, I think you want to take away something from Joe. Oh, seen it. Take away desire from Joe Chrism isn't what I was going to say. I was going to say take away some of his AD carry picks because he's been such a threat in the recent games. And it was actually Zaya that he went untouched on. I think he was 10 and 0. So definitely a strong pick for him. And you were just talking about his shuffles. They've taken the Azir away from Tivity as well. And Kerberos is Camille. And we've talked about how much Kerberos likes to split push, likes to play the side brush. And that will get taken away. Skarna, you know, it's a strong pick, but a bit of an interesting one because we tend to see more pressure from Scuds yearly. So I guess they're not happy to see Munchkiss as something that, particularly with the Predator, can match his ganking power and speed. So just for everyone, Hansen is actually replacing Shogun. Shogun couldn't quite get himself ready in time, so it will just be Hansen playing up for Enclave as a sub-support. Caitlyn's going to get banned away from Enclave. And now Shogun, who's been a really, really standout player for Enclave, isn't in this game. And this is a very important game for both Enclave and Eminem. Just to repeat myself, the winner of this game will tie with Diabolos in Group B, put themselves firmly in second place. And Monk is getting his Zack once again. I think this is the third or fourth time we've seen him play it all split. Yeah, and I think it's important when, you know, it is an important matchup as we spoke about earlier between Munchkiss and Scudzi, and you want, your Mun you want him on a comfort pick. Um, just to say in the Hansen thing, you know, it is really unfortunate because it's going to mess up the bot lane synergy and it's also going to mess up the on really difficult for them to overcome that. But we've got to see how to play it out. Sejuani has come over, come over from Eminem. Smart pick. The reason it's played quite a bit into Zach is because you can actually block his engage by using your dash. You can interrupt him. So really good to defend your carries and also offers a similar amount of engage with that champion and, you know, additionally off front line. Varus does come out. Makes sense. We've had 380 carry bans. Try to pin down Jokerism's champion pool, but not enough apparently. So does manage to get a strong pick here. Seems Jokerism like the... has seriously favoured that Varus as well. Played a lot of it. So it's one of those kind of carries. We've actually seen him do some really good stutter step plays on. This will mean Frappy will get his hands on the Sivir. So looking to try to shove early. Picked up with the Alistair as the support. So we're probably going to see Eminem pick up a support in this rotation. Of course, they will get target banned out. Tom Kench is still available if they want to get that. Try yeah, and I'd... deny anyone who gets caught out by the Zack or the Alistair. It's going to be a really, really solid pick into that. Yeah, I'd very much like to see the Tom Kench here. You have this immobile virus. The enemy team has Sivir, Alistair, and Zack so much engaged. You need something to facilitate the virus and keep them alive. And they're actually going to go for Morgana. I think it serves a similar purpose as the... Uh... As the Tom Kench, it's going to stop that engage. It's going to stop that CC. So I think the pick makes sense here. Gives a bit more pressure in lane as well. And the Kale ban comes through. I wonder who that's uh, pointed towards. I wonder if I'll ever get to cast Kerberos playing Kale. Everyone talks about it, and I've not, I've not ever got to cast it. I, he played it once in Brem, and that was the first win Enclave managed to get. So he's proved that he can still play it, but I feel like Enclave may be saying, hey, we need to get these priority picks over your first pick, Kale. That's not going to happen. Kale, Nah, GP all removed. Are we going to see another rotation of four top laners getting banned out here? Enclave looking to get their last ban through. Yeah, and it just shows the priority between these two top laners. They want the advantage. They don't want to give away something, you know, like the, the Nah or the... They don't want to give away the GP without the Nah. They want to make sure they have, you know, a comfortable matchup top and. Yeager's going to get taken away. It's going to be interesting to see if Eminem... I mean, most likely they'll take up their mid laner here so they can get the counter pick. But, oh, actually, they, they proved me wrong. They're going for the Scion here. Something we saw earlier didn't do amazingly into the Yeager, but the Yeager's now off the table, and that Scion is very strong, very tanky. And going to be interesting to see what Kerberos has to answer because I don't think he can bully a Scion too easily. No, not with all of the picks that are kind of left open for him. Obviously, we've seen Oli Angel play a lot of the Yeager, so it made sense to get that band away. Now, Only Angels picked himself up a sign who we've seen consistently coming through for a lot of the teams, but Kerberos, that will be a Triforce Chogaf. Like, let's not beat around the bush here. He's he's totally going to make build Triforce on that. That's just that's just his like item. Is we might as well re rename Kerberos to Triforce at this point. Yeah. Paris locking in the Cassiopeia has played it. Hasn't had a massive amount of success on the Cassiopeia, but he is sticking to it for now. Vladimir was open. And I think I really would like to see him play that instead of the Cassiopeia, but he says he wants to go for that 
Yeah, the Vlad's good because if you engage on a Jokerism, the Black Shield's going to do very little. And then there's all the follow-up that, you know, the Black Shield's going to be down for. But does go for the Cassiopeia, will scale extremely well. And in return, Eminem and m are going to pick up the Corky on Tivity, which, you know, it's something I think he definitely has played that before. And I think Corky is strong in the right matchups. Can do so much damage late game. Um, both team comps looking very frontline focused with these two hyper carries on both sides in mid and uh, 80 carries. So. Both teams going to be very, uh, very action packed and very fight heavy towards the late game. Well, Monkey is quite happily sitting on his Zach. This is his third time playing it in the ESL Premiership. Scudzy on the Sejuani. Now, where's the damage for these teams? Obviously, Kerberos will have a Triforce. They have some relative damage, but a lot of scaling for Enclave. They need time to get going. When I feel Eminem have a fantastic mid game into them. Talk to me about these team comps. What is it going to be? Lots of team fighting. I know obviously it will be four versus three, uh, four versus five, sorry, if it's Enclave having a team fight, but what are you expecting to see come out of here? Yeah, I think, you know, both teams are looking to do similar things in terms of team fighting, but I think, like you said, Enclave has a bit longer to come online. Siva really needs to get to those three items to hit a big spike. Varus is happy just on a Ginsu's fight then. Corky, although he does spike really hard on, you know, three, four items, he is strong on just a Triforce and he gets that package going to be huge for making pressure, whereas, you know, Cassiopeia is going to be stacking up a tier and such. So I think Eminem have the advantage to make these mid-game plays. But if we get towards the later end of the game, Enclave does seem like they will start to outscale. So going to be interesting. Eminem need to try and get a big lead so they can continue on to it. But it's not as clear-cut as some other compositions we've seen where Eminem have to win early. They do need to get an advantage early, but they don't need to be in a position where the game's over. They just need to get a lead and get that item spikes and get to a position where they can cl close out the rest of the game. Well, Frappy on the Sivir will be relatively safe. He's got that spell shield to boot, so we'll be able to soak up those Morgana Dark Bindings if he needs to. But do you feel like the Morgana maybe... Uh, you said it makes sense because of the Black Shield, but I feel with Tom Kench, it's a more reactive kind of support for peeling people out of stuff like that because you won't see Zack coming until the little shadow appears above your head. And if you don't Black Shield in time, that's them knocked up. You can Black Shield the Let's Bounce, true, but there's already been a, a, a relative amount of CC applied, which will result in a net gain in damage. But if it was a Tom Kench, Zach just lands on top of you, Tom Kench just gobbles up his support and spits him out, and then it's it's a really, really safe pick. So a little curious on why they went for the Morgana over. You did mention that maybe it's for the lane pressure, but they are into a Civet as well, who's going to be able to hard shove in lane. Yeah, well, I, I think it's just mostly into the, the Alistair. Alistair can't really pressure level one very much. So because of that double range advantage, you can get some pressure. And also, there's a lot to be said for the Morgana being able to follow up on CC. It looks like Eminem's bot lane are confident. They have been playing very well recently and they want to make it happen. They want to put some pressure from bot lane. The Tom Kench is a safer pick because I think one of the issues is Zach has AOE CC. And with Morgana, you can only spell shield one person. And he's squishy yourself. So if if you spell shield your Varus, which hopefully Camilius will do, then you're vulnerable. Um, whereas with Tom Kent, you're very tanky. Even if he does uh, pick you up and bring you to his team, you're going to survive quite a bit of time, whereas Morgana might just get bursted through. Well, we've loaded through onto the Rift. Enclave taking on Eminem. Enclave on the blue side, Eminem on the red side. Let us know in the Twitch chat who you think will win. Kerberos has got himself a Cho'Gaff. It's not really about the lane pressure this time for him. It's more about time to scale and normally we like to see Kerberos on something who has a good early game spike so he can just dominate his 1v1 in the top lane because he gets pretty much left on an island. Let's prove that point. Eminem have the highest amount, second highest amount of Rift Heralds taken in the ASL Premiership. And Enclave have the lowest amount of Rift Heralds. But Enclave have the most amount of Drakes taken. Sorry, second highest amount of Drakes taken. I'll get my numbers right eventually. Basically meaning that we see Enclave play towards their bot side heavily in these games while they leave top on an island where Eminem really like to put pressure into the top side and get only Angel ahead. So very different play styles here and it could be punishing for either team depending on who is more proactive out of the jungles. And a huge factor is what Drakes are going to come up because that's really important, you know. If Enclave managed to pick up two Infernals, I'll sure be happy, but two Cloud Drakes isn't going to do much for them. and. You know, on the PB at the moment, there is a buff coming through for Cloudrix, but at this point now, they are still, I don't want to say useless, but undervalued. And I don't think Enclave are going to be one to pick up with them. We haven't actually seen what Drake is going to be coming up first, but it will come up sometime soon, and we'll be able to inform you of that. Enclave 
value their drakes, no matter what they are. They have eight total taken. Which yeah, is and a it's a bad number it to be fair. Mountain Drake, which is actually useful when I say, particularly with the Cassiopeia, who does a lot of damage to Baron. Definitely useful Drake to pick up. They decided to opt for it. Especially as they get on the towers with Frappy, who will be shoving on this Sivir. So that would be a really, really potent Drake for them to get their hands on. But for now, it's all a little bit quiet. Junglers are playing a pretty chill game. I expect to see Scudzy pull the trigger fairly soon, as he has actually found out Monkeys on the Zac, but he needs to be careful. Monkey is going in for the Elastic Slingshot. Going to miss it as Scudzy used the Arctic Assault to get away. Paris was first to roam there. Yeah, Paris got a bit of pressure here as a 5 zest lead and keeps managing to shove Tivity in. You know, I, uh, Cassiopeia definitely some of these spikes at level 2 can put down a lot of pressure, but Corky needs a bit more time, needs a bit more items before he's in that position. Now, we're going to see Tivity build towards the Hex Drinker in this game, or do you think he's just going to play safe? Uh, not play safe, sorry, and play, play aggressive and pick up that Triforce and just really look to get his power spike as soon as possible? Um, I don't know, it's an interesting one to say. I think that the Hex Drinker could be the right decision. Uh, because you're against double AP, the the Zac and the Cassiopeia. But I mean, looking at the win conditions, Eminem do want to start to get a lead early on. So maybe in that regard, he should look to get, uh, should look to pick up trifle side. Well, starting out, only Angel. He's having a bit of a shove into Kerberos, forcing him under tower. Kerberos is ahead in CS marginally at the moment, as he's going to have this wave crashing into him as well. This will mean that if Monkeys wants to make a play, top side is always an option. Where in the bot side. Enclave are pushing in Jokerism and Camilius here, which means there's a gank potential down in that lane. Yeah, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, Scudzi is on the top side of the map, so we won't be able to help him out there. But this is what we said would happen, you know. Scudzi's playing to the top side, wanting to look for these Rift Heralds, and Monkeys is playing to the bot side, wanting to secure these dragons. Exactly what we thought, so... Everyone just playing out pretty chill. Looks like Tivity's just going to burn his Valkyrie to push this wave in, knowing that Paris is backed away. Paris has picked himself a tier up. So no new change to the tier yet. That will be next patch. So you're not going to have the Lost Chapter Archangel staff or the Spellbind or anything like that. Yeah, so Storm 8.3 at the moment. Now, just having Camellia's having a little bit of a fish from binding, not actually going to make it work for now. Just constantly shoving from this lane enclave here. They just want to be forcing Jokerism in. He's already down in CS quite a lot at five minutes. It's already starting to bleed a little bit of gold as Scudzi's been unusually quiet on the Sejuan. He normally would have seen him make a play by now. Yeah, and I think both. You... Sorry. Sorry, I think the issue is we've seen pressure across all of Enclave's lane. You know, we have chest advantages in all of Enclave's lanes and they've been shoving in and this isn't something we were looking to see when uh, they picked the Morgana bot lane, bot lane. Sorry. We were looking for uh, Jokerism and the Camellias to make use of this range advantage try and get some pressure but they've started to fall behind here. They did pick that up and Sivir was picked up as well before they got going with that as well so they knew they were picking into the, the shove of Sivir. Scudzi, again, just making sure he has control of vision on this bot side for Eminem. Make sure that Jokerism and Camellius aren't actually going to feel the pressure of a gank from Monkeys, who's, again, been very quiet. He likes to play this reactive style of jungle, doesn't really start the plays off himself. Normally tries to track the enemy jungle and try to counter gank them. As I say that... Monkeys is actually invading in. Got the three men coming through. There's the elastic slingshot coming down onto Scudzi, who gets pulverized back. Scudzi's forced to flash the wall. Winter's Wrath will not connect. And Enclave can walk away from the play. Binding comes out from Camillus. It's the only cheeky one at the end. Not going to result in a kill. Yeah, and this is what the extra pressure means. Munchkis is free to invade. End up burning Scudzi's flash. Not much else gained here. And they did trade Hansen's flash. But good aggressive play coming from Enclave. Eminem, this is a bit worrying because we did say they are looking to get this early lead and play into their mid-game spikes. Kerberos has been untouched in the top side. This is actually really nice for Kerberos. Normally by now he's at about four ganks, so this is actually working in favour for him, who's going to just be able to shove this wave in, get himself the Rift Scuttler to get himself a little bit more vision towards that top side. 
And actually, we're seeing a slight change in dynamic from Enclave. They're putting a couple of wards aggressively into the jungle of Eminem to spot out where Scuds is to make sure that Kerberos can have a nice and safe laning phase. And so far, it's working out for him. Yeah, and I think it's using as well as they have the vision control set up now to contest that uh, second blue buff if they choose to. I think you can see how much Paris has had pressure made mid constantly shoving in. It's just something you want to keep up. You want to deny that blue from the Corky so he's not able to shove out. So if he does manage to pick up a package, he's not able to do much of it. The only lane he really could look, look to use that is in the bot lane because Frappy and Hanson having a pretty solid time of shoving away here. So far, we're not seeing Enclave with their sub support actually costing them too dearly. It feels like Frappy and Hanson are playing on the same page for now. And again, it's another game where actually there's been such little action to start the game out, which is not what we're used to. I, I was expecting a lot more high action games, but they've both been very slow, very methodical. Obviously, this game is important for either Enclave or Eminem. The winner of this will tie with Diabolos. And they want to make sure that they can get that win under the belt as Paris will get himself a blue buff. So he's going to be able to shove in activity a little bit more now. because he's got pretty much three mana to work with. It's just unfortunate activity. He has picked up the package. Looks like he's going to be moving over the blue buff now, but Enclave might be moving to contest. Seven, so Alistair moving up. Maybe just establishing vision here. It looks like activity will take the blue. How much time yeah, left to get that uncontested? Although, no, they're, they're not, they're not going to go for the invader already. Scudzy does have six, so it's a little scary. Although, Unbreakable is available for Hansen, so if he takes the ulti to the face, we see he can Unbreakable it. And Spell Shield is available to Frappy, so it's actually quite hard to land CC onto either one of those two because they just. You hit, an, you hit an ability on them and they either block it or just break it, cleanse it away. And now Monkeys like, is actually hanging around this bot side. Look at all the vision coming through. There's three control wards down on that bot side. Scudzy's going to find one out in the Dragon Pit. It's Paris maybe looking for a little bit of pressure on Sensitivity. Has walked into this brush. Not being seen by the enemy side. I think it's going to be a they want to go for it. There are no stopwatches. It's been a while since I've seen those stopwatches. It's Monkeys is deciding just to pull away from that. And then he walks back. So it's in and out. He can't make his mind up. But... It's quite dangerous to, to try and tower dive a Varus and a Morgana. There's an exceptional amount of CC and there's also a black shield you have to work through. So very, very, it, it's it's risky. It's way too risky, realistically, for them to yeah. go for that play without I mean, burning some of these spells early on. You have to hope to hit both of them because realistically, unless Camellius messes up, he's going to black shield whoever you go for. So. Looks like he's actually just going to walk out the brush and pressure, pressure the bot tower. And in return, Scuddy's going to look for a gank top. And this mobile Cho'Gath is very low. Yeah, where's the first action going to come through? Cho'Gath does have chomp. Only Angel's running a little bit low, but Kerberos is lower. This looks like it's going to be an easy flash as Kerb lands a knock-up. He needs to feast soon. Only Angel's taking a serious amount of damage. And Kerberos somehow manages to make the 1v2 work in his favor. Really, really misplayed, honestly, from Eminem. They, uh... Oh, Paris is looking for Scudzi here. Oh, he is. Scudzi's very, very low. Miasma's available. Just having a little sliver around in that jungle. Not going to spot him out. Yeah, so just to say, I mean, Scudzi landed a really solid ult, but no mana on only Angel meant there wasn't any follow-up. And as a result, Kibros was able to tank for long enough that the tower, tower shot cutting through uh, Scudzi, who has no armor at this point. And we're going back to that point... Flash, but we're going back to that point that Kerberos made, how he's a player who is very good at getting ganked. That's one of the things he prides himself on. He's very good at taking ganks and keep alleviating pressure for the rest of his team. Recently, he was named the faker of UK Esports. Oh, not UK Esports, UK University Esports. Oh, I was about to say. <laughs> no, not UK Esports. That'd be, that'd be a very bold accusation to make. Uh, yeah. You can, If you have a problem with that, bring it up with Desichi. I'm fine with that is maybe looking for an opening here. Dark Binding is a little bit wide, but he's standing on a control ward, so he knows that he hasn't been spotted out quite yet. And Monkeys is also sniffing around that side of the jungle as well, so reading his opponent for now. The note, Frappy is on such a lead here. We've talked you know, so much about how strong Jokerism's looking, but thanks to that first tower lead from Munchkiz, he is now almost 700, I think 700 or 800 gold ahead we saw before. Which is huge because obviously Faris is sitting on components of Ginsburg. 
the worst situation to be in. That Blaster Mon's doing nothing for him. And he really wants that finished skin suit, but right now he's going to be pretty weak. Yeah, he's going to be pretty weak. Hansen actually did burn the flash to look for an engage onto Jokerism. We could see Chains of Corruption come through. There's going to be the engage. Choked up as Frappy did Black Shield out. Chains of Corruptions will spread and nobody will be going down. Good counter gank from the both of the junglers there to make sure neither of their bot lanes fall. As Monkeys actually <laughs> is looking for Scudzy. Yeah, and this is just a very evenly matched uh, team, honestly. It's like when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. They're both just trading quite evenly. I mean, Enclave just had the advantage from that tower, but that gank, both junglers were there. Both teams try to go a bit aggressive, and both teams come out for unscathed. So, still 0-0 zero, zero right now. Paris zoning activity off of the wave. Look at him, he's standing so aggressively forward. This is how Paris plays. He loves to play in the face of his enemy. Knows that he has that outplay potential in his pocket. Yeah, and Nervoros having a bit of a shove now. This wave, this top lane is slowly starting to get harder and harder for Only Angel to deal with. Monkeys actually has found out Scudzy. Stretching Sights Connect. There's the headbutt and the pulverize to come through. Scudzy looking to get chained up. Let's bounce back. Frappy's popped the ultimate. He can't quite find the opening. And they're going to be able to peel away. Red buff was stolen though by Monkeys. Yeah, so they do manage to get the red buff and a bit of pressure there. And being ben Scudzy's flash, but weren't able to get a kill. I think one of the huge things to say about this mid lane is Paris is now sitting on the Abyssal uh, mask and it is so strong in this match because obviously Corky's auto attacks do 80% magic damage and his abilities are magic so really struggling to do anything to the Cassiopeia and he's just going to have to farm up until he's a bit stronger in this game. Well, I do think Monkeys maybe listened to me when I said I feel like he's more reactive than proactive and he has been looking for ganks now from about 10 minutes onwards. He's been everywhere and it actually feels this time scutsy has been playing a very slow style of jungle not what i was expecting out of him he's been one of the most aggressive junglers we've got in the esl premiership and he just hasn't been able to find an opening for his team yet and we're at 15 minutes and the gold is marginally in favor of Enclave. It's only 1k that separates them. This isn't a massive amount and most of that gold lead is currently sitting on Frappy on the Civic. The issue we have here is Frappy's now has an S Reaver and Berserker Greaves which honestly is a pretty weak item spike compared to Jokerism's Ginsu. As well as the fact that the Civet ult isn't very useful in straight up combat. At this point in the game the move speed yes it's nice to try and escape or engage but it's not going to give you any damage and Jokerism has his ult which you know Puts that CC down, has quite a lot of base damage, and he has that Ginsu's, which is, if he stacks up, is going to cut through anyone at this point in the game. Well, this is this mid-game you were talking about in the Champion Select, how the teams are going to spike, m, m are going to spike in that mid-game as Triforce has finished up on Tivity. We've got Jokerism running around with his Rage Blade as well. Monkeys maybe fishing around, and m, &M looking to extend that. Rift Herald lead, they're going to pick that up as Monkeys actually goes into the pit. Here comes the teleport from Only Angel on the top side. Chains of Corruption have connected onto Frappy, who took a massive chunk of damage from the rocket. The unstoppable onslaught comes through as first blood gets picked up by Scudzy. Hansen has now got the backup of Kerberos, but it looks like Eminem have managed to find an opening and get himself Rift Herald and a kill to boot. Yeah, and you know, I... I feel like Enclave had to decide. Ooh, like, Paris flashes forward with a petrifying gaze onto Tivity. He's going to be able to flash away, but this means mid lane turret will fall to Enclave. Oh, and Kerberos. Oh, Kerberos! There he is! Just walks around the back and didn't even see him there. Just walks around the corner and gets himself a lovely feast onto Corky. That's going to be a kill for Enclave, but. Rift Herald is sieging in the bot lane, they managed, in the top lane, sorry, and they managed to take a turret up there as well. That's so Enclave trading pretty well in the situation. I feel like the issue with that team fight was Munchkiz went for the steal on the Herald, and it put him in a situation where he he wasn't able to team fight well. He'd already jumped in, it was on cooldown, he was in the middle of the enemy, uh, for the enemy teams, and then Tivity uses his package to try and zone them off, so it wasn't a great fight to take. Yeah, he decided to go for the steal instead of the fight, and it meant they were behind in, uh, in terms of health and numbers once uh, Munchkins had been put into passive. But Enclave just comes back, they walk mid, and even against the Rift Herald, they traded one for one with towers, so actually quite a bad trade for Eminem. Since they had the Rift Herald, and they only traded one for one on towers. You know, it's and not what I'd want to see. 
the yeah, Duke well, Kill as well. So that was yeah. pretty big. Gold's pretty even again. It's only 500 gold that separates Enclave and Eminem. So it's a slight advantage to Eminem as they managed to close uh, 500 gold into this gold lead. One of the things that I talked a little bit about in Champion Selects as well was Kerberos' TP usage. I've, it's been a, a point where I've been very concerned about with his actual usage of getting into these team fights as he likes to sit in the side lane the entire game. This time he's now sitting on TP while only Angels is on cooldown. So I'm going to be watching how Kerberos plays out these next few minutes in the game to see if they can find an opening and if he's going to pull that trigger. Yeah, I mean, it could be huge for Enclave to keep Snowball in this lead. And, you know, Eminem had those spikes, we're talking about the mid-game spikes, had Triforce, they had Ginsu's, they had Package, and we were looking for them to make plays of that. They used TP as well, and they got nothing. Now it's really the balls in Enclave's uh, path to make some plays with the TP, and you can see Hans trying to move towards the bot side, get some vision control. Looks like they're heading towards Paris, but... Yeah, they are heading towards Paris. The Scudsy may have spotted him out by now. But we'll just back out. Activity's forced to Valkyrie as well on the backside as Monk is. Goes in with the Elastic Sling Shot. Doesn't quite find him, though. The Mountain Drake still an objective that hasn't been taken. This is almost unlike Enclave to have not taken a Drake at this point in the game. They're aware that they're very well matched to Eminem at this point. They don't want to give up a team fight where they know they can't have the advantage. And without any vision really around that at the moment, it's not an objective they want to contest. Looks like they might be pushing for it now. They do have three members controlling vision in the river. So I think this is one of the assets of taking that mid tower. You have a Sivir who shoves extremely effectively. You can push in to get control oh. in the mid lane. Well, we've already seen only Angel expecting a play. So he roamed down into the mid lane, but... Crappy did read that like a book and he managed to walk away as Kerberos now. A little bit behind his duo partner in the top lane. Not duo partner, his opponent in the top lane. Yeah, really smart play though from Kerberos. He should put a pink ward down the river. So if only Angel goes for that roam again, it will be seen. And so much vision control on this bot side river from Enclave. And because of that, they're confident in starting up Baron. And a Mountain Drake is huge for them with Baron up in 30 seconds. And a team comp like theirs that takes Baron and neutral Neutral so well. And if his mountain is huge, it looks like the next Drake will be an Infernal, which is an even bigger prize, and both teams will be looking towards when it does spawn. I'm interested to see how many stacks Kerberos has got on his feast. It's one of my favourite games to play. How many? How much health has the Cho'Gath got? Because this is going to also be a major point, is they have a really, really good capability of taking down the Baron Nasher with Kerberos. You can feast it. Yeah, a lot of Baron controlled. Feast does so much damage. And it you takes have... away from that 50 50 smite where you've got to also kind of factor in. Kerberos can feast it, Monkeys can smite it at the same time, and suddenly your smite can't match the damage, so steel becomes really, really hard to pull off. Only concern is Frappy, again, has only got those FS and Reaver, got double daggers now as well. His attack speed is good, but his damage is still a little bit lacking. They still need time before Civ is going to be a real damage threat in these fights. Yeah, it doesn't really have the crit chance to back up the Essence Reaver. Um, so, I mean, essentially all she's using the Essence Reaver for now is just clear waves. It gives it a mana regen, but is going for a recall now. Not sure if he'll be able to, definitely will be able to pick up the Zeal. Not sure if he'll be able to get a full item and does manage to pick up the Shiv, which plays the way he's been doing wave clear. I mean, Sivir with Shiv and uh, Essence Reaver is a lot of wave clear. That's all he really needs to do right now. It's like pretty said, solid from him on the wave clear department. Currently, is pretty even on CS to Jokerism. He's been able to pick up CS across the board wherever he can, but Gerberos actually not picking up that Triforce on the Choga. It's unexpected. Yeah, I think he knows that he has the damage on his team. He has a Cassiope, he has a Sivir that trail extremely well. Something that we have seen is that Eminem have closed the gap a bit in terms of CS, the mid lane, as it's got further in the game. So the goal lead has closed to about 400. Did go up just to Civic clear that wave there, but no doubt we'll catch up again. And Jokerism's actually picked up the wit's end, so again, a huge two item spike, lots of on hit damage, and th that MR is going to be really useful for him. The only AD threat is this Sivir, and her build at the moment isn't outputting too much damage. You really want that Infinity Edge as well to get those big crits. It's going to be all about the burst. This is the thing about the crit build versus Jokerism, he's going for that on hit attack speed build. Consistent damage, Jokerism's, Jokerism is going to be able to output where Frappy is going to be all about this kind of powerful auto attacks for crit, and it's all about the burst. If he goes for the double energizer as well, it means he can get those long range pokes every now and then, but 
I wonder if he's going to go for Phantom Dancer instead of a Rapid Fire Cannon. Uh, I feel like the Rapid Fire Cannon, for me, would be the way Come to on, you're go. you're a bot laner, man. you got to tell me this. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like... I mean, well, obviously, Siv is going to pick Infinity Edge, and then if she goes for Crit Item after that, I feel like a Last Whisper is probably going to be for that. And we're actually Ooh. not for an engage here. Ulti's gone in. Chains of Corruption also thrown down as Frappy can't figure out where he wants to stand. Plastic two shots there. Let's bounce. Doesn't quite connect as Kerberos is looking to find an opening. Only Angels entered into the backside, and now Kerberos is the one who's isolated. Flash is forced away, and Kerberos just feasts down Scudzy. Jokerism has the Black Shield on, so he is safe as... Activity now is completely behind the enemy team. Kerberos is taking a lot of damage from Paris with a really good ultimate match to find the opening. That's going to be one. That's going to be a double kill on the Frappy, who's looking now to try and get Tivity as Munchkiss and Hansen are onto him. It's so much damage, and Enclave managed to find themselves a really good opening in that team fight. Yeah, Enclave just pulled the trigger and it worked. I mean, the Black Shield did keep Jokerism alive at first, but they just threw everything at him, and the Black Shield only lasts so long, and that huge. Ult flash from Paris, caught both the bot laners off guard, stunned them both, and he finished them off. And really solid play coming out from him. This is not what you want to see if you're an Eminem fan. They're now just under 2k goal behind. Isn't the biggest lead in the world, but when you're against a Cassiopeia and a Seven who scale so well, you do not want to be falling behind. Kerberos has 4,200 health. He's got nine stacks on that feast. He is doing a lot of damage, and now this is something that... And then him have to take seriously. Kerberos was left alone in the laning phase. Just something we haven't seen for a, quite a while on him. And now he's going to have a lot of pressure. Only Angel's not really able to deal with him. He's got a Frozen Heart. He's got a Spectre's Cow. But Kerberos is going to do some serious damage. He's got the Grasp of the Undying. And those Vorpal Spikes also applying health percent damage. Yeah, and he's going to be pretty comfortable in this side lane. As Paris and Hansen are actually just starting out the Baron Nasher. They've got Frappy, who's now... Only got a BF sword building towards Infinity Edge, and this is the TP usage I wanted to see out of Kerberos. He's entering into the fight. He does have Feast available. That's going to be Baron Nasher picked up. No problem, as Hansen has gone over the wall looking for Scudzy. The last six slingshot might get channeled up, and there's going to be the ulti from Frappy. Chivity does have the package. The ensemble onslaught comes through as Frappy is taking a lot of damage, but he's still in the middle of the fight. He's trying to kite back towards his team as the less bounce will peel Camillus out. That's going to be Hansen going in, but it's going to be Kerberos who finds the kill. It's going to get answered back as only Angel manages to take down Frappy, but now he's in between a rock and a hard place as Kerberos and Monkeys are just going to land the damage. Paris is here to back it up. Miasma's down, and that is going to be a free for one in favor of Enclave. Wow, and that Super fight seemed to start off so well for Eminem, you know. Frappy was trapped in the middle of the entire enemy team. There was a Scion running towards him. It just seemed like such a bad situation for him, but Jokerism and Tivity just weren't able to get any damage off in that team fight. They were zoned by Paris with his ult. And, you know, props to him. Paris has hard carried this game so far. Just didn't let anything get past him. Jokerism and Tivity did basically nothing in that team fight. Unfortunately, we can't see the damage, but... I mean... Props to him, and they managed to secure the Baron. And oh, <laughs> Tivity steals away the blue. <laughs> Tivity, good rocket. I bet he's very happy with himself. Unfortunately for Eminem, Infernal Drake is spawning up, and Kerberos has feast once again. So this is an objective he can easily secure. But the rest of the team actually collapsing in. It's a four versus three at the moment. Kerberos does manage to land the knock up with the rupture, and Paris is just zoning out with the Miasma. Going to take a couple of those honey fruit blobs to get himself a little bit of health. And the rest of Enclave have now arrived at the scene to make sure that no one will be falling. And just going to probably look to get this Infernal Drake to boot. Yeah, and that's the thing with the Cho'Gath with Warmogs. He regens so much HP. No real threat to him if he takes any Pope. And Varus and Corky just don't have the item to him right now. Interesting to see the zeal come out from Jokerism. I guess most likely going towards Ruinans. Hit more than one of these tanks at once. But could have been an idea to see the Blade of Rune King from him. The issue is... So much AP damage on Eminem. Something we haven't actually mentioned before this, but lots of magic damage is actually the build of Jokerism. He's gonna be he has a wit's end and he has a Ginsu's. He's not doing very much AD damage. And as you can see, there's a adaptive helmet on both Cho'Gath and Zack, so really gonna struggle to cut through these dudes. I would have actually liked to have seen a Blade of the Rune King come out from him now in of the zeal item. And uh, obviously Tivity has 80% magic damage. So when you're up against a Cassiopeia with the Abyssal Mask. Two frontliners who are huge with adaptive helms, and then a locket Alistair. Really going to struggle to do any damage to that frontline. Kerberos is probably not the target that Eminem really wants to start throwing all their ultimates at to get a kill on, especially with that Blade of the Ru Ruin King lacking up from Jokerism. 
Yeah. Warmog's been picked up by Kerberos as well, so he can afford to take a little bit of damage, soak up the ultis, and then just peel out and heal up, and then look for the re-engage later. Monk is actually running the Aegis, so he's building towards that locket of the Iron Solari. I think it's the shield up Frappy. It's really difficult to see what um, how Eminem went team fights because you saw on the in the team fight before they managed to kill Frappy at the start, which should be their win condition, but they didn't manage to win out the fight, and that's the difficulty is that you have to somehow deal with this Cassiopeia. But a flash is coming up. He has cleanse. He has her ult. So hard to engage on, and with his abyssal mass, she's quite tanky as well. Almost had a death push coming through for Monk Lever. They took cover in the bush but gets spotted out by the Squire's Orb. Kerberos just going to tank a little bit of damage but remember he's got that Blade of the Ruin King. Monk is going forward looking for the stretching strikes but it's a black shield to come to boot. That's going to be the Chains of Corruption going through and Cell Division's already being forced out of Monk's Tower's going to drop and Monk is going to be able to come back. Not a lot of health to be fair. So we'll probably yep. see them peel away. Paris maybe overstaying a little bit here. There is no ultimate on Stopper Onslaught coming through. Paris forced to flash. Kerberos gets a knockout. The petrifying gaze is huge. Redemption gets thrown down, but it's way too little and it's way too late. Two kills come through to Enclave. It's now Frappy flashes over the wall into Jokerism. The boomerang blade's there. Now he's looking for another as Kerberos gets a double kill. Only Angel is the only one to remain. Four full for MNN. And Enclave are looking to tie with Diabolos. Wow, and just as I was saying how difficult it is to get on top of Paris, Eminem go for it, uh, get on top of this Cassiopeia, Eminem go for it, and he uses summoners effectively, he avoids the initial CC, and he gets a huge petrifying gauge back onto Tivity and Scuzzy, and the Corky just ended up getting clapped on by the Zac after that, and once you lose this Corky, Joker just doesn't have the damage to clean up. Enclave will take the unhop inhibitor, and Paris is looking for more mid lane. Paris is going super, super aggressive. This is why we bigged up Frappy in the pregame. He has played so well throughout all of Enclave's games. Flashing forward into two, super aggressive. He's currently standing on the front line into only Angel, who gets headbutted back by Hansen. And now Kerberos taking a little bit of the CC for the team, but Monkeys goes forward. He hasn't got Cell Division, so that means Jokerism's going to be able to pick him up. And now they're looking to chase down for a little bit more. Frappy just turning his attention towards that inhibitor as Kerberos tanking up a lot. Another ultimate connects as he gets Glacial Fissured. That's going to be the end of Kerberos as he's looking to get shut down. Millis is going to be the one who's able to get that. It's 29 minutes on the clock, two inhibitors full, and Eminem find a foothold by killing the tank for Enclave. Yeah, they, they overstepped there a bit. I mean, when you're this far ahead, they, they decided to push it a bit, but you saw how long that Cho'Gath laughed. He was lasted. He was CC'd by the Morgue Binding, and then Scud's Uzzle, and even then he held on a bit longer. Just isn't the damage there from Eminem. Uh, Jokerson has picked up this Rune Arms, but not going to do very much against tanks who've got so much MR on them. Shogath actually picking up an Abyssal Mask as well now here, so extremely tanky, tons of MR, and they really need that Blade of the Moon King damage before they're going to be able to cut through them, but the issue is, look at Frappy's item. He's got his triple crit item build, and on top of that, he's picked up the uh, Mortal Reminder, so going to be shredding through this, these tanks. Really difficult to see what Eminem uh, do here, because they don't outscale. Um, I mean, I guess they can wait until the gold lead feels a bit less impactful, but they're now 8k gold behind, so it's going to be a while. And Baron's up in 30 seconds. Really difficult situation for them. If we do have a look at kind of once Kerberos gets a little bit more armor, building towards that Righteous Glory now, so he's got a Glacial Shroud. It took a long time to kill him, and he had a lot of magic resist. Now Jokerism's going to have an even harder time killing out Kerberos, and it's it's refreshing to see Kerberos play this style, play with his team, and actually not just constantly sit in a side lane. He, as I say, that is currently in a side lane, but in this case, it's not the wrong thing to do. The super's in two waves, so and he's got a massive wave. He can now crash into this tower. He has almost 6k health on this Cho'Gath. He is going to be so hard for Eminem to kill. Baron Nash is spawning up. Herb has TP as well, so if he needs to turn up, as long as he pulls that trigger, he's going to be able to get there. And he probably will just teleport in here. Yes, he does. He's got right. consumed. Not even going to get time to use it, but he turns up in time, so that's good. Yeah. It's such a hard steal, even without the Cho'Gath. The issue is with an Alistair, as you saw Hansen do before, he can just place a ward over the wall. The second Scudzy walks towards them, he'll knock him away, and then they you choose that time to execute the Baron. There's so much burst on the side of Enclave. Like, Frappy's combo with the auto attack reset with massive crits and then Paris's damage as well. They can burst the Baron down from 3k HP in the time it takes for Scudzy to close the gap to it. So, 
You know, Baron comes for Enclave and they're now just going to pressure the bot lane. They have supers in the other lanes pressured and now they're just going to push up. And as you can see, Munchkiss is in a position where if anyone tries to defend this tower, he can look to die. Ocean Drake's up as well if Enclave want to take that. Although for now, looks like the plan is just to get on to this tower. It is melting to Enclave as they are just starting to shred through Eminem's defenses. Yeah, it looks like they are actually going to back off the ocean. I feel like this... Well, I mean, I think they're sending just Trap to take it, but... Don't think this is the best decision, to be honest. They will pick it up quickly and then head back, but Ocean Drake is going to do too much for you now. And it means Tivity does think this is the time for him to go top lane and try to clear some waves. Well, they need to start clearing them as their super minions pouring in. Baron and Power minions are coming into the box side. And it looks like a third inhibitor turret will be under siege from the side of Enclave. The fight needs to break out for Eminem now, otherwise they will just feel the pressure. Tivity's hanging around the side. The binding connects onto Hanson, who's already used the Unbreakable to peel away. Going to be able to do so for now, but they've got to deal with those supers because they are inside the base, and Enclave just know they can play around that. Just playing as far away as they can. Occasionally get a couple of pot shots onto the turret. Next wave does come in. Here comes Kerberos stepping forward, tanking for his team, making sure that's going to go down. Inhibitor number three. Short to follow. There's going to be the Chains of Corruption. It looks like the fight's about to break out. Redemption gets thrown down. The flash forward, but that's going to be a kill onto Frappy to start it out. He's looking for Jokerism, who takes a serious chunk of health. That's a double kill. Monkeys with the stretching strikes. We're still, still trying to find them an opening. Boomerang Blade comes down. It's not going to be enough for them to get a kill, though, as Kerberos looks for the rupture. Tower number one falls as the Nexus is falling to it. An Enclave, there's nothing that Eminem can do. They're just toying with their food, and that will be Enclave tying with the Diablos in the ESL Premiership Week 4. Huge play coming out from Enclave. Kerberos was very solid, played extremely well, but props to Paris. I mean, Hans... Uh, sorry.